Welcome to our channel Learning Math. In this video, we're going to solve the sample for official exam 2021 in math for grade 9. We're going to solve the questions of uh, orthonormal system and geometry. In an orthonormal system of x is x prime or x y prime or y, we have the points a and b in addition to the straight line d of equation y equals half x plus 7 over 2. Locate the points A and B and draw the straight line D. Know something, to draw the straight line D, we need two particular points in order to join them. But if we take X equals 0, then Y will be 7 over 2. Know that here we have the same denominator in both of them, which is 2. Well, 7 is an odd number. If we add to it 1 or subtract to it 1, it will be directly divisible by 2. So its answer will not uh, involve a decimal part. So it's easier here to take the particular values for x1 and minus 1. Well, for x equals minus 1, y will be half times minus 1. It's ha minus half plus 7 over 2. It gives us 6 over 2, which is 3. So the first particular point is minus 1, 3. Now, if we take x equals 1, then y equals half times 1 plus 7 over 2, which gives us half plus 7 over 2, 8 over 2 equals 4. Then the second particular point is 1, 4. Now, we just plot these points, minus 1, 3, and 1, 4. When we join them, we get the straight line D. We also locate the points A, 3, 0, and the point B, minus 1, 8. Now write an equation of the straight line AB. We have several methods to write the equation of a straight line. The first one is to use the formula y minus ya over x minus xa equals yb minus ya over xb minus xa. We can use it since we have the coordinates of a and b are completely different from each other. Now we have the coordinates given. We can just replace them in the formula. We have ya is 0, xa 3. YB8, XB minus 1, we just replace them by their values. So Y minus 0 over X minus 3 equals here 8 over minus 1 minus 3 gives us minus 4. Same sign, we add them and put the sign. Well, 8 over minus 4 plus over minus minus. 8 over 4, 2. So Y over X minus 3 equals minus 2. Now if we move X minus 3 to the other side, we have divided by it becomes times. So y equals minus 2 into x minus 3. Now we can just expand them. So minus times plus minus 2 times x, 2x. Also minus times minus plus 2 times 3, 6. That's y equals minus 2x plus 6. Therefore, the equation of the straight line AB is y equals minus 2x plus 6. Another method which is very important. We have the coordinates of A and B. The general form of any equation for a straight line is y equals a x plus b, a and b are the unknowns. The slope a can be determined by the formula y b minus y a over x b minus x a. We have the coordinates when we solve them we get it minus 2. So we can replace a by minus 2 then a b has the equation y equals minus 2 x plus b. Well, what about B? We can find it from a particular point, which can be here used B or A. Both belong to the straight line AB. Well, A belongs to AB. The coordinates of A satisfy its equation. So we can replace Y by YA and X by XA. Then YA equals minus 2XA plus B. We just replace the coordinates of A. We solve it. We get B equals plus 6. Therefore, the equation of the straight line AB is Y equals minus 2X plus 6. Now show that the point C of coordinates minus 5, 1 belongs to the straight line D and locate this point. Know something, in order to prove that C belongs to D, its coordinates should be satisfying the equation of D. So here, if we solve half xc plus 7 over 2, it should be equal to yc. Now let's solve half xc plus 7 over 2, we replace xc by its value which is minus 5. 1 times minus 5 gives us minus 5. Here, as if it's over 1, 1 times 2, 2. Plus 7 over 2, we copy it. Now, 7 minus 5 is 2 over 2 gives us 1. Isn't 1 equal to yc? So, here we can say that coordinates of c satisfy the equation of d. Therefore, d passes through c. Now, something which is very important. Let m be the common point between the sides a, b, and c. 
uh, and d sorry find the coordinates of m the coordinates of m x m and y m are unknowns for us we have two unknowns to determine them we should have two informations they are given as you see m is a point on a b and a point on d so we can directly say that the coordinates of m will satisfy the equations of a b and d directly then we can say in this case that y m equals half x m plus 7 over 2 and also y m equals minus 2 x m plus 6 we are talking about the same point m so it has the same ordinate which is y m and the same abscissa which is x m. Well, if we solve y m equals y m, since we are talking about the same point, same ordinate, we will get rid of one of these unknowns. So we get half x m plus 7 over 2 equals minus 2 x m plus 6. Here is an equation of one unknown which is x m. Well, know something we have here same denominator 2. 1 times xm is xm, so we can write it xm plus 7 over 2 equals minus 2xm plus 6, we copy it. Now, if we move 2 to the other side, divided by becomes times, so we multiply it by both terms here. So, 2 times minus 2 gives us minus 4, and 2 times plus 6 gives us plus 12. Then, xm plus 7 equals minus 4xm plus 12. Here we can group the unknowns on one side and the numbers on the other. If we move minus x, uh, 4xm to the first side, minus becomes a plus 4. Here, plus 7, if we move it to the other side, it becomes minus 7. So xm plus 4xm equals 12 minus 7, then 5xm equals 5. So we can say that xm equals 1. Well, what about ym? We can find it from one of these two equations. If we say uh, here ym equals minus 2xm plus 6, when we use the second equation, we just replace xm by its value, which is 1. So it's minus 2 plus 6 gives us 4. Therefore, the coordinates of m are 1, 4. Sure, we write x, then y. Now show that m is the midpoint of the segment AB. How to prove m is the midpoint of the segment AB? We have the coordinates of A and B. Also, we have proved the coordinates of m. Let's find the coordinates of the midpoint for the segment AB. Are they the same as the coordinates of m? Let's check them out. If we solve xA plus xB over 2, isn't it 3 minus 1 over 2? It gives us 2 over 2, which is 1. Isn't 1 equal to xm? Well, what about ya plus yb over 2 is 0 plus 8 over 2 gives us 4. Isn't it equal to ym? So, we can say that m is the midpoint of the segment ab since its coordinates are the same as the coordinates of the midpoint. Well, show that d is the perpendicular bisector of the segment ab. Not something which is very important. We have given the equation of AB. Why we want it? To prove perpendicular first, we need the product of the slopes that should be minus 1. We have the equation of dy equals half x plus 7 over 2, so its slope is half. Well, what about the slope of the straight line AB? We have just found its equation y equals minus 2x plus 6, so the slope of AB is minus 2. Now, if we multiply the slopes of D and AB, we get at half times minus 2. If we simplify 2 by 2, so it's equal to minus 1. So here we can say that the straight line D is perpendicular to the segment or the straight line AB. Well, know something. We have M is the midpoint of the segment AB. And we have given that M is a point on D and AB. AB. In particular, the perpendicular D to AB is passing through M, which is its midpoint. Therefore, we can say that D is the perpendicular bisector of the segment AB. Well, let's see the circle circumscribed about the triangle ACM. Show that the radius of the circle is radical 65 over 2. We have the triangle ACM. Isn't it right at M? Well, the circle circumscribed about this triangle should have the diameter AC. Then its radius is half the hypotenuse AC. Well, 
If we find the length of this hypotenuse AC, then we can find the radius, which is half this hypotenuse. Well, how to find it? AC equals radical XC minus XA square plus YC minus YA square. We have given the coordinates of A and C. So we can just replace them. XC, which is minus 5, minus XA, which is 3, or square, plus yc which is here 1 minus ya which is 0 all square now minus 8 squared plus 1 square gives us 64 plus 1 which is 65 so ac equals radical 65 now the radius is half the hypotenuse ac or half the diameter ac so it's radical 65 over 2 now let's start by the geometry question here is a circle C of center O and radius 3 cm. AB is a diameter in this circle. Let P be a point on this circle such that we have PB equals 5 cm. Also, M is a point on the segment AO such that AM is equal to cm. Now, what's the nature of the triangle ABP and calculate the length of the side AP? Before reading any question, we should first analyze the given. How to analyze it? We have given P is a point on the circle. It's a rule whenever we have point on a circle, we have angle inscribed facing the diameter, which is 90 degrees. So here we can say that the angle A, P, B is equal to 90 degrees. Well, can't we say then that this triangle is a right triangle? To find the side A, P, can't we apply Pythagoras theorem in this right triangle? Well, so applying Pythagoras theorem in the right triangle A, P, B, we can say that the hypotenuse square, which is here A, B square, it will be equal to A, P square plus P, B square. Well, we have the lengths of A, B and P, B, we can just replace them. So 6 square equals A, P square, we don't have its value, we copy it the same, plus P, B square, which is 5 centimeter all square. Now we solve the power, so 36 cm square equals AP square plus, 60, uh, plus 25 cm square. Now we group the numbers on one side, plus 25 becomes minus 25 when we move it. Then AP square is equal to 11. We have found AP square, but we need the length of the side AP, not AP square. So to remove this square, we can write it plus or minus radical 11. Sure, minus is rejected since length. Therefore, the length of the side AP is radical 11 cm. Well, something which is very important. We have the circle C' prime of diameter AM. AP cuts the circle C' prime at E. When we have it cuts this circle at E, so E is a point on this circle. We have another angle that should be inscribed facing the diameter and also it will be 90 degrees. As you see here, we can say then that the angle A, E, M, salient is equal to 90 degrees. Well, they are asking, uh, asking us to show that the sides E, M and P, B are parallel to each other. Can't you see that they are perpendicular on the same line? which is AP. So here we can say that these two lines are parallel to each other. They are perpendicular on the same line. Well, now find the length of EM. Something which is very important. We have parallel lines, then we can apply tail's property. Here these are the two transverses that are intersecting. We can say that AM over AB is equal to AE over AP and also equal to EM over BP. Well, AE and AP, we don't know their values, but we have the values of AM, which is 2, the diameter AB, which is 6. We also have the length of PB, which is 5. Now we can just replace them by their values. So we can say that AM over AB, which is 2 over 6, equals EM over PB, which is 5. Note we can simplify here 2 by 6 and also if we move 5 to the other side here divided by becomes times so 5 times 1 5 over 3 therefore am is equal to 5 over 3. Now let us be a point on PO such that P is equals to centimeter. We should analyze the given first. S is a point on PO. What does PO represent in the figure? Isn't it issued from the vertex to the midpoint O of the side AB? Well, here we have a median. 
We have S is a point on this median such that P S equals to centimeter. Also, we have K is the midpoint of PB. Now, find the ratio of OS over OP and deduce what does S represent in this triangle EPB. Also, we should deduce that AS and K should be collinear. Now, know something. We have the radius PO which is equal to 3 cm. We have the radius of the circle C is a 3 cm. PS is a, S is a point such that PS equals 2. Can't we say that? PS over PO equals 2 over 3. Well, PO is the median. The ratio of PS over PO is 2 over 3. Can't we say then that S is the centroid of the triangle PAB? Since we have PS over PO is 2 over 3, where well, PO is the median. Well, something else. We have K midpoint of the side PB. Can't we say that AK is a median issued from the vertex to the midpoint of the side facing it? So we have here a median in the same triangle PAB. Then this median should be passing through the uh, centroid or center of gravity S. Therefore, we can say that A, S and K are collinear to each other. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe.